First of all, Mark, I want to thank you for running. It's obviously time for some changes, and we appreciate you stepping up to the plate. Um, my question has to do with uh, this incredible federal budget deficit that we're facing right now. Um, our, our country as a whole is in, in the process of borrowing largely from overseas banks to finance whatever projects we've got going on. All candidates, yourself included, have talked about tax benefits, tax reductions, tax credits. How do we get a handle on this huge deficit so that we're not handing this large bill to your son, to my kids, to everybody else's kids? Let me ask a question before I answer. I'm going to give you a question here, if I can, to this audience. And the three measurable points are one is not that important, five, pretty important, ten, very important, and concerned. The question is going to be about this economic crisis. To you personally, do you think it's a one, a five, or a ten? Who thinks it's a one? Who thinks it's a five? Who thinks it's a ten? And it goes right to your question. Because why I like to bring that issue up, and this is actually the first time I've done this, and to ask that kind of point question, because the issue you bring up, the deficit, debt, in the last eight years, it has gone, is totally out of control. This year alone, a half a trillion dollar deficit in our budget. We will be at $11.5 trillion of debt this year. 20% of what you pay in taxes, what Faye does in her, are you still doing your book, your business, or she? Absolutely. Doing a little marketing for Faye. Um, but 20% uh, of what you pay in income taxes and payroll taxes goes to pay the interest, interest on the national debt of foreign countries. If anything, the federal government has a subprime level. You know, when they complain about individuals doing subprime, no, the federal government got the worst of it all. And it's going to take some tough calls, but let me give you a couple quick examples. Medicare. In the Veterans Program for Prescription Drugs, we get to negotiate. Get the lowest rates for our VA program. Medicare, by the law set by Congress, they cannot negotiate. Here's the net result of that. If we could negotiate just with Medicare, the ability to negotiate prescription drugs on behalf of Medicare recipients, it would save $34 billion. $34 billion. Product comparison, VA, 7-ounce saline product, buck and a half. Medicare, same program, same bottle, same product, $7. $34 billion. If we allow generic drugs at a higher level with Medicare alone, $5 billion. The savings are there, but because of special, you know, you can, in your own mind, figure out why Congress restricted themselves to negotiate on behalf of you. Because someone had their ear that had not our interest in mind. Let me give you another one. When I became mayor of Anchorage, I looked and I saw a whole bunch of cell phone contracts and I said, you know, it seems that we're not getting the best rate. I said, we're going to cancel them all and rebid it. One contract for the whole city. And they said, oh, you know, you can't do that, Mark. You know, I've got to balance it all out. I said, no, I don't. I don't represent those telecoms. I represent the taxpayers. That's how we're going to do it. So we put the bid out. We saved $20,000 a month. Now imagine if we did that I don't even have to do a study on the federal government. I would venture, I would bet, and you, all this, you tell me an amount of money, and I'll give you 10 to 1 odds on it, that I guarantee you there are more contracts for different telephone companies all across this globe, all across this country, that the federal government has with different rate structures, different pricing. There's no reason we should have that. Now, some will say, well, we've got to spread the, the money around. No, we don't. No, we don't. Because the best client that anybody wants is the government dollar. And that's how I did in Anchorage. We were the platinum client. If you want our business, we're getting the lowest rate. And that's how it works. That's why when you go to the Sullivan Marine in Anchorage, which used to run $300,000 in a hole every year, now it profits. It used to be when it ran in the hole, the company that managed it still got paid, 
and we lost money. When it made a little bit of money, we still lost money, they still got paid. And I said, we're canceling that contract. The guys from New Jersey flew in, man, they flew in so quick, it was amazing. I said, yeah, that's great, we're gonna cancel it. Unless we get better terms. What's the new terms? 50-50 in all proceeds net, and anything over $300,000 net, we get 70%. Because we're the platinum client. The federal government is the platinum client. But we don't do the business that way. We do it like we're begging for people to take our business. No, they want it. The millions that I believe are sitting there, I mean, just those two examples of Medicare are appalling to me. That we have legislation that prohibits us from negotiating the benefit of the taxpayer. What, what are we thinking here? And so there, I think it, it is no simple, it's not gonna happen overnight. You know, during the Clinton years, it was a positive plus. You know, we're spending $10 billion overseas now in the Iraq war every single month. You know, one of the things I've said over there is, on this issue is, we should just stop spending one dime rebuilding our country because we can't afford it any longer. Now, some people will argue with me. Well, we blew it up. Well, we can't afford it. And that's a reality. They have $80 billion in the bank. They need to take hold of that because how'd they get that $80 billion? They're selling oil to us, and we're paying that price. So they are getting our money. So we just, you know, there's ways we can do this, but we've got to make the decision. It's, and I think what happens in politics, especially legislative bodies, they're afraid to get one side mad at the other. Again, once you've been a mayor or sat in city government, yeah, get used to it. Uh, get the alligator skin on and get busy. Because when you're down the road, if you've done the right decisions and the right process, doesn't mean all the time people can agree with you, but if you've done the right process, and you've been open about it, and honest about it, acknowledge it when you had mistakes, the public will be with you. They may not always like sometimes your decisions, but if they feel like you've done a process that's fair and equitable to all sides, they'll be okay with that. What happens in Congress right now, they're just afraid to make any decision that might get them not elected. And my view is, hey, do a good job, and you know what? You'll get elected, or like this election, what you're starting to see across the country, it started to move. It's about to, it's coming to this tone that I saw once in 94 when the congressional races were all up in this country, was throw the bums out. And that's what they're getting to, because people are done. They're, they're, they're frustrated, and this economic crash is now affecting every single person's pocketbook. When you talk about the debt, the deficit for our kids, you know, I, again, I just got Jacob's, I thought, education savings account. It's education deficit account. Uh, I, I'm looking, you know, uh, he's, you know, he's probably going to get, he's out there, he'll get mad. He actually picks up on all this, so i got to watch out what I say there. Um, he's not going to college, he's 35 at this rate. Um, <laughs> No, but we have to make some tough calls, and they're not going to be easy. And I guess what, what I'm willing to do, and I'm not afraid of it, I've never been afraid to take on tough fights. But you've got to get in there. But you also have to communicate it back to the people, what we have to do. Because we all have to be part of this solution. And we can blame everybody, and I can tell you there's plenty of blame to go around. But the, the cards have been dealt. We probably have three cards left in the deck right now, and we better make sure we do it right. We're going to make a little error on the way, but we have to be frank with the voters and explain it and help figure out how to make this happen. I can see things. I see it every time I'm out in the communities. Someone will bring me a new idea or something they've seen. Or like when I was up in Fairbanks and the Tenmont Chiefs who do medical coverage up there said to me, Mark, you know, I don't get this Medicare, Medicaid thing. I said, what do you mean? I said, well, I said you know, if you don't get it, you're doing the programming. I'm, I'm ner now very nervous. And they said, well, we had a patient come in. This is one example, I have plenty of others, but one patient comes in, they need a medical procedure. They're Medicare and Medicaid qualified. They need a certain procedure. Medicare, on the document, said, we will not cover this. Medicaid said, we will cover this. But in order to get the Medicaid coverage, they had to apply to Medicare to get denied to then get Medicaid. Made no sense. It actually said it right on there. This, this procedure is not covered. And that's because of the way the systems are. And I'm a believer that it's not about patchworking and doing this, but you've got to look at the system and the root cause of it and make some radical 
And I say radical not in a dramatic change, but recognizing what those problems are and saying, we're going to make it better and being able to step out there. So, you know, this debt is scary. The deficit is the first priority. We have to get that under control. And here's my biggest worry. If interest rates start moving up, that means the debt we have will cost us more and more and more. So it's a very careful balance to ensure that the interest rates stay stable while you get this deficit under control. And it goes to your question earlier, why you then have to grow this economy through stimulus. And yes, you're gonna have some pain in that first period, but you have to look further down the road. When I came in as mayor that first year, everyone looked at me like I said was crazy that I was gonna do this investment, deal with this budget, so we can't do it all. I said, if we don't do it all, five or six years from now, we're gonna be a big world of hurt. And I'm glad we did it because this economy is a mess nationally, but Anchorage's finances are in great shape. We are stable, we are growing, in the sense of employment and everything else, because we thought about the future beyond the moment. And politicians spend too much time thinking about the moment.